Hi guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction and welcome back to my channel. So I love fantasy romance. It is one of my favorite genres. However, I feel like when I mention fantasy romance, people automatically bring up Akatar or From Blood and Ash. And while I do love both series, I know there are so many other fantasy romance books out there. So I asked some of my absolute favorite book talkers and booktubers for fantasy romance recommendations and they did not disappoint. So I am so excited to share their responses with you and make sure to check out everyone's channel linked down in the description below. Friends, so when it comes to fantasy romance, I tend to be a big sucker for really wholesome, cute relationships and stories or just in general when the book has that sort of feel. And it can be kind of tricky to find one that has that and has some spice to it. A lot of times it feels like it's one or the other, but a book that I think is a perfect combination of both would be The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This is one of my favorite reads of 2022. It kind of swept me away, caught me off guard the entire time I was reading it. I just found myself smiling and feeling like it was so, so adorable. And the setup is that we follow a young woman who is a witch living within our own world. She has to keep this part of her identity a secret as the rest of the world does not know that witches exist. A lot of her life has felt very lonely. She's felt very isolated. She doesn't really feel like she has a place to call home. And one day there are three young orphan girls who need her mentorship in order to learn how to control their powers so that they do not reveal themselves to be witches to the outside world. She takes on this responsibility and the relationship between her and the little girls is the absolute cutest, but then there is a particular figure that she meets who is very protective of these young girls. He's mainly tasked with their education outside of anything to do with being a witch. And so he cares for them very, very much. And at first he's a little standoffish toward our main character. At first he's not really sure about her entering their lives, but then as the story progresses and he sees how much she cares about the girls, he grows to care about her as well. So their relationship is also peak cuteness and the story in general is just absolutely adorable. I can't say enough of those synonyms enough. It really is the absolute cutest story and on top of all of that, the relationship does have its moments of tension. It does have its deep moments. Their relationship is fantastic, one of my favorite couples, and there is a hint of steam in the story alongside the cuteness. Hey guys, it's Becca here from Becca in the Books and my favourite underrated fantasy romance is 100% Fortuna Swarm by KJ Sutton. So this one is a fairy romance which is my favourite and in here we are following Fortuna who is a nightmare which means that she can reach inside people's minds, figure out what they're most afraid of and make them believe that they're experiencing it. Now she is an incredibly powerful creature but unfortunately right now she's also the last of her kind because two years prior to the start of this story her brother Damon went missing and she has now exhausted all of her resources trying to find him and she's about to give up when she's approached by a very powerful fairy male who tells her that he knows exactly where her brother is and he will take her directly to him providing that she marries him. Now this is a series that has a ton of paranormal creatures in it. We have the nightmares, there's also the fae of course, there's dragons, there's wolf shifters. I think we also have like a selkie potentially in book two or three and we also have multiple love interests throughout this series. I would love to know if you pick this book up on my recommendation who your favourite is. Mine is Colleth, just so you know. And the thing that I love the most about this series is Fortuna herself because she is such a deeply flawed main character and she is going to infuriate you. She's stubborn, she's rash, she's impulsive but she's also incredibly loyal and she cares incredibly deeply about the people in her life. This one is going to be a six book series in total. It's not all out yet. There are four books out with the fifth one coming later this year and then the sixth one assumedly next year and if you like a big thick chunky book like me don't be put off by the size of this one because while books one and two are pretty short, the series does gradually like get bigger as you go. And I actually have book four next to me because I'm about to film a book haul and it is a monster. It's a brick of a book. So don't be put off by the shortness of this and do let me know if you enjoy this one after picking it up on my recommendation. Hey, so my favorite fantasy romance is Radiance by Grace Draven. This follows two royals from rival kingdoms who are being married off to each other 
are in a political alliance. Not only do they come from rival kingdoms, but they are also different species. The heroine is a human princess, and the hero is this nocturnal species called the Kai. And what I loved so much about this romance is that they are both completely unattracted to each other because both species have different beauty standards and so because of that they find each other very ugly and physically unappealing but they start off their arranged marriage with this really great friendship and eventually that turns into this super strong emotional bond and I just loved the friends to lovers aspect of this book. It's not only my favorite fantasy romance but it's one of my just overall all-time favorite romance books ever. Hey everyone my name is Rachel and my channel is Raven Haired Reader. One of my absolute favorite fantasy romances of all time is definitely The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. This book is not only one of the best fantasy romances that I've ever read but it's also just one of my favorite books of all time. This book follows Araya. Araya is a human girl who actually ends up getting raised by vampires in this like vampiric kingdom. When Araya is of age, she decides to compete in this very dangerous tournament to the death in order to win one wish from the goddess Nyaxia. Araya wants to partake in this competition because as she's a human living in a vampire world, she is very vulnerable and so she hopes if she wins, she'll be able to be granted protection by the goddess. While Araya is competing in this tournament, she ends up making a very very unlikely ally. One of her competitors, who is the very deadly and very handsome vampire named Rain, these two start off kind of as enemies and then reluctant allies and then friends and then end up having a really beautiful slow burn romance. The reason why I love this book so much is because I think it's the perfect balance of fantasy and romance. The romance is absolutely at the forefront. It's slow burn. There's so much tension between our characters, but the author keeps the tournament and all of the things going on in this vampire kingdom at the forefront of the book as well. I truly was never bored reading reading this book. I think that the author does such a great job at engaging you plot-wise and romance-wise. This book ends on truly a painful cliffhanger, but I was truly kept engaged the entire time, and Araya and Rain are just one of my absolute favorite fantasy romance couples of all time. This is absolutely a five-star book to me. I recommend it to literally everyone, and it is just truly one of the best spicy fantasy romances that I have ever read. Hi, my name is Jen from the Book Refuge, and one fantasy romance that I love to recommend is Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup. This is book one in the In Between series, and this book is about Emma, who is a mother who is in her 30s. She is living kind of in hiding in this quiet little town, and when her daughter goes missing, she turns to um, a love from her childhood, who is a prince in this land, to help her find her daughter. And it forces her to confront, you know, what went wrong in their relationship back when they were young and they need to work together to find her daughter. And it also forces Emma to confront some things about herself and her magic that she has been pushing down and put to the side in favor of, you know, focusing on raising her daughter. Um, and so there's lots of twists and turns. There's lots of sexual tension between her and Rain in this. And I just loved seeing this. Um, this is the bookish box, bookish box edition. Um, and I love seeing this, you know, full-bodied, you know, average looking woman who is a mom and she works hard and she doesn't want her time in the limelight. She's not supposedly the chosen one or any of that, but she is a mother and she's fierce and she will use everything, including her connections with the prince of the land to get her daughter back. And I love seeing motherhood in such a positive light, but both the ups and downs of it. She's not a perfect mom by any means. There's a lot of secrets that she'd kept from her daughter from those many years ago. Um, but I just love seeing her and Rain reunite and the way that they're going to band together, rekindle their love and rescue her daughter. So this is a recommendation from me. The first two books in this series are out now. All right, guys. One of my absolute favorite spicy fantasy romance books is A Court of Blood and Bindings by Lizette Marshall. So the story is following Emmeline, and Emmeline lives in the human island. And right away, we learn that the humans are terrified of the fae. So the fae live on a separate island, and they possess color magic. So they are able to draw on colors to create magic. So let's say you draw on red, you can create destruction magic, or you draw on yellow for healing magic, or you can mix those colors together and create completely unique magic. So that is how the Fae's powers work, but the Fae are actually controlled by the mother and the mother's henchman, the Silent Death. 
So one day our main character wakes up and her entire town is on fire and standing over her is the silent death himself. So the story goes from there and I absolutely love this. This story has fake dating, which I feel is very rare in a fantasy romance. It also has so much angst and our male main character actually isn't able to speak. So for the majority of the book, he's either writing down what he needs to say or he actually ends up learning sign language, which I absolutely loved. Overall, this was such a fun read and I highly recommend you guys pick it up. Hello, my name is Aviva and I was asked to share with you a fantasy romance recommendation and anytime somebody asks this me and I'm trying to give them a recommendation that they may have never heard of before, I always give them the Trial series by Amanda Hawking. So it's Switched, Torn, and then Ascent. This is one of my favorite series of all time and it's one of the biggest reasons why I not only fell in love with the fantasy genre in general, but I also realized that I always need a really good romance to get me through any story. So if you're not familiar with what this series is about, you're basically following this girl who grew up her entire life thinking that she's a regular human being. And then one day she actually finds out that she's a changeling. She was switched at birth and she's actually a trial princess with magical powers and her queen mother is waiting to meet her. So she has to go back to the trial community, meet her queen mother, learn how to be a trial princess and how their community works and everything like that. And also learn how to use her magical powers because happens to be her trial community is at war with another trial community and she's going to have to be the one to save them all. So it's got politics, it's got war, it's got magic, it's also got a lot of good romances. There's a bodyguard romance, there's an enemy to lovers romance. There is just everything going for it if you are a fan of YA fantasy romance series. So yeah, that is my recommendation for you. Hey guys, my name is Tori, my channel is Novel Life. I want to say thank you to Jess for asking me to join this collab of giving you a spicy fantasy romance recommendation. And the one that I am going with that I hope some people haven't chosen is Gothicana by Runex. Now, I would say this is more fantastical with paranormal aspects. Our female character can actually like kind of like see ghosts, I guess you could say. This takes place in like a college town in a school that's like up on a mountain. Very aesthetic. I mean, if you can tell from the cover, very kind of like gothic vibes. Obviously it's Gothicana, but um, it's also age gap student teacher. Uh, she has a relationship with one of, the, one of the professors, which is very interesting, very steamy. There's like a steamy scene that's in a car when they're going back to the school after going into town in the rain in like a thunderstorm it's fantastic but there is some trigger warnings for suicide you see that there's like this whole history of students committing suicide so just know that going in but i really enjoyed this super spicy with these fantastical elements i'm stretching it a little bit but i would highly recommend this but Hello my friends, my name is Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life. I am very excited to talk about my all-time favorite fantasy romance. When Jess asked me about this, I immediately thought of a book, which is the one I'm going to be talking about, but in my typical fashion, I have to have a few runners up, so I'm going to show you my favorite, all-time favorite YA fantasy romance. It's Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I just recently reread this. Absolutely incredible world building. The feeling of longing and falling in love for the first time is so visceral and beautiful in this. I adore this book. I think this works for adult readers, not just young adult readers. And now onto my all-time favorite fantasy romance, which is A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. This book took me by complete surprise. I was really not quite sure how I was going to feel about this because the cover was giving me like uh, barbarian harlequin vibes, and that's not entirely what you get here. You get a lot of nuance. You get not great world building, but you get this very brutal fantasy world with barbarians, for sure, and warring kingdoms. So our hero is definitely definitely enemies with our heroine. This is a true enemies to lovers. They hate each other. He believes that she's responsible for the death of his parents, and so he is determined to demolish her, basically. And she thinks, you know what, I think if we joined our kingdoms, that would be better. So they're in this working arrangement. She has a physical disability and he is determined to just squash her, to demolish her. And he is so surprised at the strength of her will, at how clever she is, that he very gradually falls in love with her where he is at the point when she is in danger. He is racing across the country, screaming her name to get to her. I love this book. I think it's brutal. It's inventive. It's creative. It has such a great romance that really makes you work through all of the enemiesness to get to their great romance. And I just think it's fantastic. So so this is my all-time favorite fantasy romance and I recommend it to everyone. My favorite spicy fantasy romance has to be The Royal Stuology by Ella Fields. The first book, A King So Cold, has the best love triangle that I've read in my life. It's a spicy from page one 
line one. And this book has a very interesting premise, which is that Argyll, who is this queen that has this almost icy magic in that it's a little bit mean, has been betrayed by her almost husband. And she has decided to remove every memory and then banish him. But one day she will get the news that this man is trying to remake his life and she will be like, nah, -uh, come back. And she will torture him slowly but surely, telling him how he betrayed her and the story unfolds from there. We'll see how nothing is as easy as it seems and it's a very good blend between a character and a plot driven story. Let me know if you end up picking this book and what are your thoughts. Thank you so much, yes, for counting me in for this collaboration. Hi everyone, my name is Tiffany. I go by Tiff Talks Pages here on Booktube and Neverland Pixie on Bookstagram. And when I was asked for a steamy fantasy recommendation, I had to go with Contradictions by Ampersand. This is a Harry Potter fan fiction with a Hermione and Draco pairing. Fan fiction has been like my take the red pill moment. Okay, when it comes to my reading, I have been enthralled and living. And I think that this is the perfect entry point into BDSM romances, being that we're learning along with Hermione. We're following her post-war. And not only is she dealing with PTSD, she's having intimacy issues. And like the true studious queen we know her to be, she turns her dilemma into an experiment. And in her research, she discovers BDSM and submission, learns that it could possibly help her unpack her trauma, but also give her the much needed release that she's after. And she's also led to the Scarlet Order, which is a steamy club that gives her a very extensive questionnaire in order to place her with a dom. And this opens with their first meeting where she arrives glamored to conceal her identity. She's also asked to be blindfolded, okay, to conceal his. And during that first meeting, let's just say she gets that much needed release and it drops her glamour and reveals her adolescent and wartime enemy Draco. So she apparates out of there and he chases after her in order to really properly close out the scene with aftercare. And their romance continues on after that. I loved how this had a very well paced plot and it wraps up in an action packed way. But the best thing about this romance is the praise, okay? Draco's praise is everything because I see Hermione as this painstaking, people-pleasing perfectionist that really gleans her value out of being needed. And so the fact that Draco gives her praise just for being as opposed to doing, it's absolutely delicious. I loved it and I hope you do too if you choose to pick it up. You can find this on Archive of Our Own. It's everything. Hey guys, my name is Maddie and thank you so much to Jess from Honest Fiction for including me in this video. I just want to tell you guys about one of my very favorite fantasy romances, which is the Plated Prisoner series by Raven Kennedy. So there are several reasons why I love this series and why it's one of my very favorites. It is a reimagining of the story of King Midas and the female main character that we follow is one of my all-time favorite female main characters in any book I've ever read. She is not the kind of female main character you see in fantasy who is a badass right off the bat or within a few hundred pages even. She has so much character development throughout this series and you really get to watch her come into her own and it is so satisfying to see her really grow into herself and her power. And our male main character, I adore him and what I adore most about him is he is just so supportive of her. He doesn't come in and just save her ass all the time. He supports her saving herself, which I love. But he's also not afraid to do what he's got to do, so. Anyway, there's also just a fantastic larger cast of characters and I adore all of them. And the spice is also amazing. It doesn't kick in until a few books into the series, but it is so worth it when you get there. <laughs> So yeah, I absolutely adore this series and very highly recommend it. Hi, I'm Christy and my channel is Christy Reads A Lot. So I'm here today with a fantasy romance rec for you. So the book I'm going to be recommending is Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup. This is a special edition from The Bookish Box, which it just came in recently and it is gorgeous. 
So instead of holding up this book, I'm going to showcase the actual like original cover for you. So this is the first book in a new series by Jess Wisecup, and they all follow the same couple, the same characters. So book one and two are both on Kindle Unlimited right now. Book one, I know the audio is already out. The second audio is coming. And then the third book releases this summer. But this first book is absolutely amazing. And I love it so much. I love that this is an adult fantasy romance that delivers on both the fantasy and the romance aspect. Love that we have older main characters in this as well. The heroine herself, she's actually a mother to a teenage daughter which I feel like we never see in fantasy romances with the heroine or the hero having children when the story starts. So I loved that. So in this one, we're following the heroine, Emma, and we learn a little bit about her backstory in the prologue at the beginning of the story and kind of the setup for this amazing fantasy world. And then we cut two years later, she's the mom, like I mentioned, to a 16 year old daughter, and her daughter goes missing and Emma is ready to tear the world apart to find her daughter. As a mom myself, I loved seeing this strong, resilient mom heroine take over and just like kick butt in this fantasy world. On top of that, we get an amazing fantasy world. The magic in here is amazing. There's prophecies, the lore, the powers, like it was all amazing. On top of that, we have a second chance romance, which I love second chance romances, and this one definitely delivered. The romance in here is definitely a slow burn, but I loved it so much. The hero and the heroine both have hurts from their past, and so you definitely understand both sides of their stories. And then the hero Rainier, we learn about him, and he is just like a protective, caring, swoony hero who does so much for Emma, even when he's like a little bit mad at her still. Like the romance wasn't even rekindled in here yet, and I was already like swooning for these characters together. There's also an amazing friend group in here, which you get to learn some of their side stories as well and see how they've been affected by this friendship. I love that the characters and even the side characters in here are so well developed. They all have feelings and big emotions and things they've been through, things they have to work through together, things they have to get over. Like they have to work together to try to find Emma's daughter. And I just loved it so much. There is this quote that I absolutely adore from the hero, which I'm going to read it because I love it so much. So it says, I love you, Emmeline. I have loved you from the start and I will love you until we are both just a whisper on the wind. It's your eyes I see when I close mine, your heart I want to hold, and I'd set this whole damn world on fire if you wanted to watch it burn. Love this so much. Definitely pick up Between Wrath and Mercy. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Carrie and my channel name is Booked for Romance and I actually have a series I would like to recommend and it is The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse series by Laura Thalassa. Um, I will talk about book one. I wanted to show you guys my special editions. They are so pretty. Um, but this book is post-apocalyptic and this would be if the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse came down, what would happen to Earth? So this has lots of spice in it. It's a good fantasy romance, but let's start with our man Pestilence. He is commissioned to come out and pretty much wipe out humanity. That is his job. So he gets to earth and starts killing everybody. Um, well, we run into our main heroine, Sarah, and Sarah quickly realizes because she sets up this whole trap for Pestilence and attempts to kill him, but she quickly realizes you cannot kill Pestilence. So she, he ends up tracking her down after she attempted to kill him. And we have a captive situation. Yes, a captor captive situation. This is amazing. It's spicy. I am here for it. It was such a good, fun read. Um, it just has all the feels to it. And it's really one of those series that you just get sucked into. So the first one is Pestilence. Um, the second one is War. The third one is Famine. And the final one, which was an amazing conclusion, is Death. I highly recommend all of these. They were so fun. What a ride. Um, you definitely have enemies to lovers type situation and you'll be here for it. I highly recommend these and I hope you guys enjoy the wreck. Special thank you to Jessica for inviting me on here, and thank you so much. Hi, my name is Lizelle from Lizelle's Books, and my favorite genre of romance is fantasy romance. My favorite fantasy romance books, other than A Court of Thorns and Roses, One of Glass, is the Immortal Instruments series. The first book is called City of Bones, and in City of Bones, you have... Claire, Clary, who's out with her best friend Simon in New York, and she witnesses a murder. But Simon doesn't see anything. She doesn't see the murder that Claire sees. And she discovers a world of shadow hunters living in New York because of circumstances. 
she has to become a shadow hunter and i love this series it's my favorite it's by cassandra clary and i have read all the books in that series so if you haven't read the shadow hunter series please check it out hey i'm jesse from the bookish mom and my favorite fantasy romance is the air awakened series by elise kova this is a self-published ya fantasy and I absolutely love it. We are following Vala who is a library attendant in the palace and one day she ends up inadvertently saving the life of the crown prince. The crown prince is kind of this dark brooding no one really likes him type character and by accidentally saving his life she kind of becomes bound to him and it also unleashes a ability that she didn't know that she had. And it is one that has been lost forever and no one really knows why. So we kind of discover why this one specific elemental magic has been lost. We kind of go along with her while she like learns to come into her magic and everyone kind of shuns her. And then of course we have this amazing romance that's very sunshine and grumpy and I absolutely love it. It is such a good series. And there is also more books set in this world, like after the original five books that follow other characters and like generations later. And it is so good. So if you want a not very spicy kind of fade to black fantasy romance that has a ton of books and a bunch of world building and a really great romance, definitely check this Hi everyone, my name is Ava from Ava's Romance Books and by far my favorite fantasy romance would have to be Radiance by Grace Draven. So Ilda Cohen here, our heroine on the cover, she is a human woman and she is kind of a spare heir to the human kingdom and she has been put in a marriage alliance with Brishan's people. Brishan is a Kai creature. Kais have gray skin, yellow eyes, claws, sharp teeth. Humans and Kai don't correlate with each other like at all. They don't mingle with each other, they don't live together. And so it's a big shock when Ildigo figures out that she's going to be marrying a Kai man. Brishan is a spare to his kingdom as well. I think he has a few older siblings and so he's never going to get the throne but the humans and the Kai need an alliance and so they decide to marry their spares. When they first meet they honestly find the other person scary ugly. <laughs> like they don't find them attractive whatsoever but they are friends like right from the get-go. They find each other very hilarious. They feel like they can talk to the other person but there's no attraction from the beginning. The attraction develops through their marriage and through their friendship. So through their marriage, they end up falling in love with each other. And I think it is one of the most beautiful things I've ever read about ever. This book is definitely more for the character driven reader than the plot driven reader. This is generally more focused on their relationship. However, there is book two in the series, Eidolon, that is also based on them. And this one is definitely more action packed, jam packed, and it takes place right after book one. So if you want like, a whole little series to read. You definitely need to pick up the Wraith King series by Grace Draven. I just adore these books so much and I hope people love them as much as me. Hi everyone, I'm Hannah from Hannah Blackwell and I just wanted to thank Jess for inviting me to partake in this awesome collaboration. So the question is, what is my favorite fantasy romance excluding some super popular series? I have a whole bunch of favorites. It can honestly change based on the day. So I wanted to talk today about Traitor Witch. It's one of my all time favorite fantasy romance series and this is a why choose fantasy romance series about a lunar witch. Her name is Nilsa. She gets framed for the murder of her high priestess and so she tries to run away, ends up on a pirate ship with five pirate shifters and fae and warlocks, all different kinds of magical beings. And this is a why choose a romance between her and these pirates. Adventure ensues and this whole series is completely action packed. I was really surprised by how addictive it was. Each book ends on a little bit of a cliffhanger and I honestly have to say, 
It's one of the very few series I binged in a month. I read this whole series and generally it takes me a while to get through a series. I absolutely love this trilogy. The covers are gorgeous too and I also think that this is the perfect time of the year to be reading pirate romances. One of my favorite things about this series is the amount of research that Mary Mystery went into witchcraft and making sure that she made Nilsa and her craft very like realistic yet fantastical at the same time and I really loved that. It was super witchy and the romance itself was A++. The spice, the smut, the steam. There are scenes in this series that live rent free in my head. If you're looking for a witchy romance, a pirate romance, a why choose fantasy romance, definitely check this one out. Hey friends, my name is Victoria from the channel Victoria's Romance Reads and my favorite fantasy romance book that is not Sarah J Mass is A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. This is book one in the Kingmaker Chronicles but we are just talking about this one because I have not read the rest of the series, sorry. But I adored this fantasy romance book. The heroine's name is Kat and she is incredibly powerful but is hiding her powers because people want to use it for bad things. And so she's hiding out at a circus as a circus performer but she ends up getting kidnapped by a man named Griffin who knows who she is and knows what her power can do. And he then has to journey with her and his like group of friends back to their kingdom and so he and Kat end up being tied together or like handcuffed together for this walk journey back and they spend so much of this book tied together and I loved that forced proximity element to it. Kat is such a badass. She is incredibly powerful and she, no matter like how scared or anything she is, never runs away from a fight. She always holds her own in battle, which I thought was so cool. And one thing that I totally loved about this is how much romance is actually in it because Griffin goes from kidnapping her and wanting to use her power for his own gain to becoming incredibly protective of her and I thought it was so swoon worthy and I loved it. Would highly, highly recommend it. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. There were so many amazing fantasy romance book recommendations on this list and I'm really hoping this video just helps promote some lesser known fantasy romance books and authors. And if you submitted a clip, thank you so much. Like I said before, I have everyone's channel linked down in the description below. And with all that out of the way, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.